In addition to being one of the finest players in the NFL, New England Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski is one of the fascinating people in sports. What are some of your favorite and least favorite memories? Look no further, today we have a breakdown of Gronkowski's most delightful and worst moments. To begin with, the moment of celebrating after he lost the Super Bowl. Many people were irritated by Gronkowski's apparent celebration after the Patriots were defeated in the Super Bowl in February. Former New England greats Rodney Harrison and Teddy Bruschi are just two of the many who have remarked on his uncommonly cheery temperament. Harrison believed Gronkowski didn't care about the outcome of the season's most crucial game because he gave the idea that he didn't. Furthermore, his ankle injury prohibited him from playing in the Super Bowl, but not from dancing around to LMFAO songs did not help his case. Moving on, Gronk's message to Tebow. Although Gronkowski's recent acts have many people laughing their asses off, this is not a funny issue. Whether he likes the job or not, he must represent the New England Patriots on and off the field. Disrespecting a well-known and well-liked player on the the roster of one of your division opponents is not in line with the Patriot way. Since Wes Welker was benched for the first round of a playoff game due to pretty benign comments, I'm curious how harshly New England would discipline their all-pro tight end in response to this event. Welker's foot jabs at Jets coach Rex Ryan occurred during a Patriot-sponsored news conference, which is a different set of circumstances from what happened here. Nonetheless, Gronkowski's comments were negative and will not earn him any points from the New England brass or the PR department. Following that, taking a break to hang with stars. October of the prior year may have been the first clue that Gronk's conduct would soon become an issue. Following the revelation of photographs of Gronkowski with adult film actress B.B. Jones in an embrace, the team punished him internally. It forced him to deliver a written apology to the New England media. This occurred after the photos were made public. It wasn't so much the subject matter of the images, which were shockingly tame given the breadth of possibilities. The inappropriateness of advertising an adult film celebrity while dressing as Patriots players went viral on the internet and Twitter. Before Gronk apologized, Tom Brady weighed in on the topic, claiming that he could have predicted Gronk's issues. Gronkowski then made nearly 10 variations of the identical reply in response to every question he posed during the humiliating post. Fortunately, the discussion was cut short. I had no intention of doing anything that would harm anyone involved with the New England Patriots or on behalf of Robert Kraft, he said. It was just a simple image, and that was all there was to it. But Rob, it's not about purpose, and it's time to realize that because it's time to learn. Next up, shirtless, once more, inside the Playboy mansion. Gronkowski felt compelled to visit the Playboy Mansion more than once last year. However, he's already connected to the adult film industry. His most recent venture into Hugh Hefner's playground did not result in any further negative headlines. Nonetheless, from the Patriots' perspective, indulging in such activity cannot be at the top of their list of preferred activities. In the grand scheme of things, this won't harm Gronkowski's reputation in New England, yet it won't help to ease the weight that's currently being carried by the camelback. Moving on, not to mention the Deadspin.com slanderous rumors. They did recently post news via busted coverage. Now, I'm not going to argue that anything Deadspin.com has to say is correct, but they did cover the story. It has to do with the photo that is presently shown on this slide. Namely, the claim that the girl on the far left is just 16 years old. Whether the story is true or not, the question remains. How many Patriots have had reports of this nature associated with their names? Brandon Spikes have been suspended, and a home video has also been revealed. In addition, many other players on the squad, including Kevin Falk, have been charged with weed-related charges. However, when the sheer amount of negative headlines is considered, Gronkowski emerges as the overwhelming winner. In addition to the worst moments, Gronkowski has some pleasant ones. Next, we have every time an ordinary mortal tried to attack him. Gronk's ability to make defenders look like idiots when attempting to bring him down will most certainly be remembered as the most memorable aspect of his career. When Gronk was at his best, he was practically an unstoppable locomotive, and it required the combined efforts of at least three defensive players to bring him down. The highlights are more than enough evidence. Moving on, we have the 69 jokes. The most famous of Gronkowski's billions of 69 jokes come from when he taped the number to the back of a blank practice jersey, wore it on the field, and invited reporters to guess what it was. It's the essential things in life that mean the most. Following that, the Yo Soy Fiesta incident. At times, Gronk appears to have communication issues even in English, so it should be no surprise that his Spanish may use some more. Despite this, he agreed to an interview with ESPN Deportes in which he tried his best to speak Spanish. Not only did it result in a pretty lovely Gronk scene, but it also provided the tight end with a catchphrase that would continue for years, Yo Soy Fiesta, which translates to I Am Party. Up next, Sergio Brown is thrown out of the club by Gronk. Gronk has annihilated numerous defenders on Sundays, but maybe the most ferocious demolition of an opponent happened in 2014 when the tight end completely buried Sergio Brown. Brown was Gronk's previous teammate. Gronk aggressively blocked Brown, sending him fleeing off the field and onto another part of the nation. Gronk's post-play statement was even more hilarious than the block itself. 
himself, according to CSN New England. Gronkowski stated in the play, he was just yapping at me the whole time. As a result, I grabbed him by the collar and let him out of the club. Moving on, the spikes. Although Gronk was not the first NFL player to spike a football, he may be remembered as one of the most strongly associated with the celebration. Gronk's propensity of releasing a seismic end after practically every touchdown he scored earned the moniker Gronk Spike. Recognition over time. Gronk was known to sometimes mix things up by putting several fresh features into his famed spike. The most imaginative thing he did was honor England's royal guard by giving them a royal end. Following that, the parade performances. The postseason was the regular season for Gronk. The parade was the playoffs, and the regular season was the parade. Following his three titles with the Patriots, he enjoyed a great career as a duck boat racer, with some performances on par with his on-field ones. Who could forget the day he was drinking beer non-stop while hanging out of a moving duck boat while wearing a minion hat? Legend. Next up is the spike for the puck. During his career, Gronk's massive spikes harmed more than just footballs. During an honorary visit to a Bruins game after New England won the Super Bowl in 2015, Gronkowski snatched a puck and tossed it off the ice at TD Garden. The puck bounced off the boards and into the stands. To everyone's relief, the ice surface remained playable, and the flying rocket did not damage any innocent bystanders. We may now start playing. Moving on, invading a White House press conference. Gronk most recently deviated from the Patriots' arranged group tour of the White House in 2017 and went on his own. When he attended the White House news conference conducted by Sean Spicer and made his way to the press room, he was unaccompanied by any responsible adult. Gronk interrupted Spicer and asked if he needed assistance, but the former press secretary refused to take it. The tight end still has time to compete in this year's competition. Who knows, maybe it will lead to a job in Washington once his football career is finished. Up next, the setting of the NFL draft. The Patriots chose Gronkowski with the 42nd overall pick in the 2010 NFL draft, which was an absurdly late pick for a player of his level. His onstage antics, such as grabbing and donning a Patriots helmet and chanting Gronk with his entire family, were extraordinary and gave a window into the tight end's erratic temperament. The last catch. If Gronk's football career is finished, his final reception in the NFL was a game changer. The vital red zone catch was critical in the Patriots' 13-3 victory over the Rams, as it helped set up their lone game score. It seems fair that his final catch should serve as a great example of how unstoppable he and Tom Brady were as a team when they were both at their best. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you liked it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching.